I've decided this evening to just talk about all of the problems that naturally arise if we can talk about something within us that can separate from the body. And if it can separate from the body, that means there's some kind of a trip or a journey. And everything we say is really a consequence of this, this one simple statement. It can only journey if it is. If it is, it must have some definable limit. If it can, it must go from one place to another. To journey implicit in this must be that it can then move from some place, a body, to something that is not a body. So all of the particular and curious questions emerge once you question, once you explore this issue of the journey. I think it comes down to four basic problems. Here we are. Now, I'll take it first in terms of the journey. If it can separate, if it can separate from a body, if it can separate from a body, then that is, must be some kind of a collective. It must retain some kind of, for lack of better word, form. Form not in the sense of a shape, but some kind of identity. If it can retain an identity, then there must be something then that sets its boundaries. And what's interesting about this is that we just don't want it to retain an identity. We want it to retain a particular identity, which we call the self. Now, oh. if therefore there is one authentic account of a soul separating from the body, that means then, if it separates, there must be some kind of a vehicle. By that I mean something just, of, nothing other than what we just described, I'm putting it together in one word and saying it's a vehicle. So if I draw here a picture of a man, let us say for the moment, therefore, I can talk about the soul and represent it in this way, with wings. And since it has the capacity for, we hope, experience, then we can say there must be an eye of the soul, and therefore I put a little face in there. But right now, I'll just put one eye in there. Of course, that means it's a cyclops, but it isn't intended that way. All right, now, if we say then it can separate, from the body, then by necessity it's a bodiless thing, right? It's not, a, it can't be a body. It separates from the body. Unless we have an operation and we remove a limb from a limb. But this seems to be the question of whether or not if it separates, if it retains an identity in its separation, and if it does maintain an identity, then we have a curious kind of question. Not only how did it do it, not only why did it do it, but what we can say if it does it. Now, if it can separate, obviously there must be a return. So 
So therefore, if separation a return, because otherwise there'd be some question about whether or not there ever was a separation. Therefore, this is talking about the separation of the soul from the body while someone is still living. If that is at all possible, then we have this interesting process of a separation, separation, and a return. If we have the separation and the return, then we can ask whether or not that return from that soul trip is in any way similar to how the body got it in the first place. Because if it can separate from the body, then how did it get it in the first place? So that's an interesting question. Right? How, did it, how did the body become ensouled? And then once ensouled, how does it function? How does it function? How does it function in the body? And why, why would it even function in the body? I mean, why did it even get involved in the body? Well, so we have one, how did it get there? Two, what is it doing while it's there? Three, if there's a separation, we are quite interested in that separation. And four, we're interested in the return. Now, everything we say is to try to make sense of some person's account of a separation and a return. Everything we say really follows this, and these are all the problems. Now, would you not agree, if there is a return, then we can ask, was it worth it? What, in what way is it a positive or a negative experience? We can say, look here, it's very nice to have separated, but maybe the separation caused irreparable harm to the psyche in some way, and therefore it shouldn't be done. In the same way, we can say, what advantage accrued to the individual? Or, was it a fall? Was the fact that the soul enters the body, was that a result of a fall, a negative, or was it a positive? Once and sold, how does it function? Is there something it does equally well that we can put in plus and minuses? So when and sold, how does it function? Because if it's important for us to have a body, why separate from it? Now the separation, the very process of the separation. 